Have you ever wondered what time actually consists of? After all, modern science denies everything that doesn't have a material basis. Behind each phenomenon in the universe, there's a corresponding elementary particle. If there's no particle, the phenomenon does not exist. So does this mean that time doesn't exist? Or does time also have its own building material? What is a time crystal? And why can even a small child make it? Suppose you and your friend who's standing behind you are watching this video at the same time. Say you are 3.2 feet or 1 meter from the screen, and your friend is 6.5 feet or 2 meters away. This distance is what determines who will be the first to see the video as it plays. According to the timing, you will hear my voice after 0.002 seconds, and your friend only after 0.005 seconds. It's the same thing with the image. 3.34 billionths of a second, or 3.34 4 times 10 to the negative 9 is the time it takes for each frame to reach your retina. For your friend, it will take 6.67 billionths of a second, or 67 times 10 to the negative 9. This is because of the fact that sound and light move in space at a certain speed. In this case, the speed of light, reaching 983,571,056 feet, or 299,792,458 meters per second, which is considered the maximum possible signal transmission speed in the universe, which is pretty much true with with just one small correction. Close your eyes for a few seconds. Independently of external stimuli and the presence of sounds or light, you'll feel the passage of time and intuitively be able to understand how many seconds have passed. Now, imagine that after you open your eyes, time has become slower than light. Now, Perhaps the whole world around would be like watching a movie with an incredibly slow internet speed. The image freezes and all the objects around move like in horror films. First, before your eyes and then abruptly behind your back, motion itself gets hung up and the light from it reaches your eyes quite slowly. The same thing happens if you yourself reach the speed of light. Time will begin to freeze. If you exceed this speed, according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, time will go in reverse for you. The cause and effect relationship will also be broken, and the effect will precede cause. That is, a stone can reach your head before someone has even thrown it at you. Fortunately for us, time travels a little ahead of light and you don't observe any freezing pictures in reality. If this were not so, the rays of light would reach any point in the universe in zero seconds, and the whole image of the future, past and present, could be seen everywhere all at once. This would happen because if time moves faster than light, we're not able to see its particles. Any particular object appears before us for just millionths of a second before its photons enter our retina and we see it. This means that even if we know exactly where the particle of time is in space, it will elude us before the photons that allow us to see have time to reach the particle. Or we may notice it, but it will be a little later. The particle of time will fly away, but the light that allows you to notice it will just be getting closer at that point. In this case, the image of the particle will split. One part will appear in the direction of travel of the flying particle due to the light. The second part will slide in the opposite direction of the movement of the particle in the form of a gradually flying image, which the particle will leave behind while approaching us. Particles like this are called tachyons. They have an imaginary, that is, negative mass. In fact, mass is what slows down acceleration. If you try to accelerate in space to light speed, what you will experience is that the heavier you are, the slower you will accelerate. 
Photons have no mass at all, which allows light to move so fast. But since tachyons have mass with a minus sign, they don't slow down, but rather accelerate endlessly. And that's why we see the inevitable passage of time. Only all of this is just in theory, which, by the way, could open up many possibilities for us. One such example, the tachyon anti-telephone, is a concept developed by Gregory Benford in 1970. Such a device, it's assumed, would have the ability to send messages to the past using tachyons. Then you, in the present, could call yourself in the past to sign up for Riddle a few years ago. However, in practice, detecting real particles of time is incredibly difficult, almost impossible. It may be easier to identify whole crystals of time. This is certainly not quite the building block of time. However, they allow you to visualize the real dimension of time in the form of a material object. In 2012, Physicists Frank Wilczek of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Alfred Shapir of the University of Kentucky advanced the theory of the existence of such crystals. In physics, crystals are not beautiful, shiny things, but how all matter in the universe forms into a solid. If atoms couldn't assemble into a crystal lattice, then you would have only liquid or gaseous forms. Take, for example, ordinary water. When its atoms begin to line up in a crystal lattice, ice is formed. Now imagine that we put a piece of ice in a complete vacuum where it will remain in a state of absolute rest and won't be able to interact with the surrounding environment. Then the crystal simply ceases to change in all spatial dimensions. A piece of ice will not melt and will not be able to build up mass due to nearby water molecules, which means that all atoms will remain indestructible in space. Only Wilczek suggests that this is not always true, claiming that some atoms do not change in the first three spatial dimensions, but they do in the fourth dimension of time with a clearly defined interval. That is, the oscillation of such atoms is pure time, and crystals possessing similar atoms are therefore time crystals. But by 2014, Japanese physicists Haruki Watanabe from the University of California at Berkeley and Masaki Oshikawa from the University of Tokyo stated that it was impossible to create such a crystal. Indeed, for this, each atom in the lattice must be connected not only with neighboring atoms, but with all atoms of the crystal, which is impossible in principle. The greater the distance between the atoms, the more the bond between them weakens, so there can be no talk of time crystals. However, around the same time, Russian physicists from the ITMO University in St. Petersburg, led by Valery Kozin, made the first attempt to create time crystals. They took several atoms, froze them to a temperature close to absolute zero, and once every nanosecond, they changed their magnetic fields. This allowed them to constantly maintain a bond between the atoms. Only in nature, such frequent changes of magnetic poles don't occur. Therefore, it's also impossible to find time crystals, if not for one thing quantum entanglement. This state makes it possible to maintain a bond between particles and atoms even at a distance of hundreds of thousands of light years. In this case, everything is much simpler in reality, but more difficult in laboratory. Indeed, making all the atoms in the crystal lattice achieve proper quantum entanglement is no easy task. For this, it's necessary to laser target each tiny particle in the crystal lattice. Even then, such a procedure doesn't offer any guarantee of a successful result. However, in 2018, physicist Sean E. Barrett, along with colleagues at Yale University, discovered that even a small child could create time crystals. Moreover, many children across the planet 
regularly grow time crystals. True, this would only be those who use kits like Chemistry Kids, which includes a substance called monoammonium phosphate. It's added to the children's kits so the little researchers can create crystals at home all by themselves. Scientists have proved that time crystals can appear right there in ordinary crystals of monoammonium phosphate. Perhaps in the future, crystals from children's sets will be able to completely replace our usual watches, and at the same time, they'll never stop, fall behind, or get ahead, and they would even work if all the clocks in the universe were to break at the same time. If you like my video, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so as not to miss out on new releases, give us a thumbs up, and share this video with your friends. It's more interesting to discuss such topics together.